In this video I'll be showing you how to play PS2 ISO games on your PS2 by streaming them to your PS2 using PS2 OPL Manager. So at the start of this video I'm just going to assume that you already have the PS2 ISO game images. As you can see here the examples I'll be using for this video are Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, Sly Cooper, and ATV Offroad Fury. You can generate an image file or an ISO of your game by using a program like ImageBurn and there's tutorials on the internet to do that already so I'm gonna assume that you've already done that for this video I'm using games that I have copies of I have legal copies of all these games so I've ripped them myself and we're ready to go um, so basically for this video we're gonna be using a program called OPL Manager I'll have a link in the description to it but basically it allows us to do some really neat things uh, one of which is generating the directory structure that PS2 OPL manager or OPL loader needs to correctly read those ISO games. And you can also use it to download um, kind of the thumbnail images for games and the disc covers and everything. So when you're scrolling through them on your PS2, you get a visual before you start up the game, which is kind of neat. But we're not going to be covering that in this topic. We're simply going to be using it to generate the directory structure. So as you can see here, in my games directory I only have these three games and I have no other directories inside of here so to generate those I'll use OPL manager and I'll start it just by double clicking on this executable file the first time you start it it'll ask if you want to do automatic update checks every time it starts you can just click save to that on this next screen it'll ask about anonymous usage statistics and whether you want to send them to their server or not I'll just disable it and click save and now finally we're presented with the initial configuration so on this page since we're streaming through the internet we can just leave the mode on normal even though there's this network option I just leave it on normal because we're using a Windows share to share the files out we're not using FTP as they suggest here so you just leave the mode as normal and on browse we'll just select the directory where our games are so for me that's just the games directory off of my desktop so I'll select games and click OK Next I'll click save and I'll get a little error message saying that it couldn't find a CD, DVD or art folder in that directory. We can just click OK and then it asks if we want to create those directories so I'll say yes. So now we have all the directories or folders. I'm going to kind of use these words interchangeably but uh, directory is kind of the Linux word and folder is the Windows word for pretty much the same thing so don't mind if I'm using them but know that they're interchangeable in this video so but basically back to this tutorial we're done with OPL manager for now um, but like I said you can do some pretty neat things with it like find those thumbnails and all that you can play around with it if you want to figure that out there's tutorials online to do that as well but I'm not gonna be covering that in that in this video so now if we go back to our games directory we'll see that all these other directories have been created so what we'll do next is select our games drag and drop them into the DVD directory so now if we open up DVD our games are inside there and that's all we need for PS2 OPL loader to read those games and start them up correctly the next step is going to be setting up the share and so that'll basically allow our computer to send these files over the network to the PS2 so it can read them and play them so to do that you want to right click on the directory that the DVD folder containing your ISO images is inside so for me that's the games directory so I'll right click on it and go to properties and then I'll click the sharing tab and the first thing will change right off the bat well we will want to double check this password protection so as you can see here it says people must have a user account and password for this computer to access shared folders we don't want that We'll make this easy and just make it so that everybody can read the share, uh, but nobody can change anything when they're accessing these files through the share. So to change this, we'll click on this Network and Sharing Center link. The Network and Sharing Center will pop up, and then we'll click the down arrow on this All Networks Horizontal Rule here. And at the very bottom, we see this section called Password Protected Sharing. You want to make sure that Password Protected Sharing is turned off, so I'll select that and then click Save Changes. It won't update immediately here, but to make sure it's updated you can click OK and then right click on it again and go to Properties and Sharing tab. 
So now we see that it says people without a user account and password can access the shared folders. Perfect, that's exactly what we want. So the next step is to share this folder out. So to do that, I'll click on advanced sharing and share this folder. So here it's asking for the share name. Uh, usually people just call this PS2 SMB. I'll call it the exact same. SMB stands for server message block and it's just the protocol that's used for these network shares. Um, but it's not important to know that. So I'll just call it kind of what everybody else calls it. So that is our share name. It's important to remember this because when we're doing the PS2 setup, we're going to need this information. Next, we'll click on permissions. And by default, the everyone group has read-only permissions. Awesome. That's exactly what we want. That's all we need. So we'll click OK and OK. Now we can see it gives us a network path so we know that it's been shared out which is awesome. The second step is to go to the security tab and we'll have to do pretty much the same thing again except this side is going to be the file permissions. Before was the share permissions so first of all who can access this directory? Who are we going to allow to kind of request files from? So that's kind of the network side. Now this is the file side and it's the file system saying okay do you have permission to actually access this specific file? So you have to set up both of those for this to work correctly. It uses the most restrictive permissions. So if we give someone read and write permissions as their share permissions, but only read permissions as their file system permissions, they will only have read permissions overall because the combination of those two is the, mo the most restrictive combination would be read only permission. But that's kind of a little aside. It's not important to know that. Uh, so to do this, we will click on edit, click add, and in the object names to select, we'll type in everyone. You can click on check names. It should be underlined now and capitalized. That's good. You can click OK. And now the everyone group has been added. We see that it's also added read and execute list folder contents and read permissions, which is great. We can read. That's all we need. We can list things too. So we're good here. We can click OK and close. So now pretty much the entire computer setup is done. The last thing we'll do is find the IP address of the computer. So to do that, we'll open up, up a command prompt by typing CMD, click on command prompt, and in this window, just type IP config and click enter. So now we can see here all of our IP addresses. So the IP address you're looking for is your IPv4 address. Usually it'll start with a 192168, as you see mine does. Sometimes it'll start with a 172.16 or it'll start with a 10. Uh, if you find an address like that, that's probably the address you're looking for. Uh, but just make sure it's your IPv4 address, not your default gateway and not your subnet mask. So just take record of this number here because we'll need it when we go to connect the PS2 to the network share that we just set up. So now I'll see you over on the PS2 side. All right, so this is gonna be part two of the tutorial of using PS2 OPL loader. So this is the PS2 side. As you can see, I've started up my PS2. I have free McBoot installed, as well as PS2 OPL loader, of course. And I'm just gonna start up OPL loader. So I'll navigate down to it and just start it up. So the two steps, or the kind of the two things we'll have to configure with PS2 OPL loader will be the client side, the PS2, as well as the server side. So the server we're gonna be connecting to. So Sorry, I'll just go back. So when you start up PS2 OPL Loader, you'll be presented with a screen that looks kind of like this. It'll have uh, games at the top. It'll tell you kind of what it's loading from. The different options are USB, Ethernet, and apps. So to configure the Ethernet settings and what server we want to connect to, we'll click the Start button, like it says in the bottom left corner, to go to Settings. We'll click that, scroll down to Network Config, click X, and we'll be presented with this screen. So the top half is kind of the PS2 side, it's IP addressing, and the bottom half is going to be the server we're connecting to. So right off the bat, we can set up the PS2 side. The IP address you'll want to set up has to be on the same network as the PC that we're connecting to. So like I said previously, my IP address on the computer is 192.168.1.103. So I've checked out my network and I've confirmed that the address 192.168.1. 142 is available. There's no other computers using it. So I'm setting the PS2 up to use this address as you can see here. You'll want to choose an IP address that another host on your network does not have. 
You can usually figure this out by going into your router's uh, web app, and usually you can get a list of hosts. Just make sure that the IP address you're choosing isn't already assigned to a computer on your network, and you'll be all right. The next thing is the subnet mask. For this, we want to set it to the exact same subnet mask that was displayed on the computer when we did IP config. So for me, that was three groups of 255 and then a zero at the end. So as you can see, I've just set it the same. And for the gateway, again, I've set it to the exact same as what the computer had for its gateway, which was 192.168.1.1. The next setting is the Ethernet speed and the duplex settings. I just leave this at automatic unless you have a really good reason to change the settings. Uh, and if you do have a really good reason, you'd know to change it on your own already. So that's basically the PS2 side. The next is going to be the computer side, the server side we're connecting to. So right off the bat on this IP entry, we're going to want to enter the IP address of the computer hosting the share. So once again, when I ran that IP config command, the IP address was 192.168.1.103. So I've entered it here. The port, we're using the default SMB port, which is port 445. Just leave this as default unless you've done some changes to your computer or the share. But once again, if you've made those changes, you'd know to change that already. So if you haven't made any changes, if you just followed this tutorial, leave the port at 445. Next is the share name. So for here, we'll want to put the share name as what we set up the share to be on the computer, which for me was PS2 SMB. So you can just enter it here. Uh, word of caution, when I was setting this up, I ran into some difficulty, and I figured out my problem in the end. It was giving me errors was because I had a space before PS2 SMB. I'm not sure if that was just something I did or if it's a mistake that's easy to make in this software. But if you're running into some problems and you try and restart it and you're getting 300 level errors, just check to make sure you don't have a space before or after the actual share name. It's tough to see if there is a space, um, but it's, it can cause you a lot of grief for something that's pretty simple. So just something to keep in mind and when you're entering the name, make sure you don't put in spaces because it can really throw things off for you. For the user, you can see it's set to guest. I've done that because we specified that everybody could access the share. They didn't need to log in. So we'll just log in as a guest. You can just leave it as guest in all uppercase. I think that's what PS2 OPL Loader recommends. And for the password, like it says in the bottom right corner, leave empty for guest authentication. We'll just leave it empty and click OK. Next, we can go down and click Save Changes so that it'll write out those changes. As we can see, it says Settings Saved. That's great. I'll click Circle. Now I'll click Start to get back to the main tabs for our Ethernet games. To start up the server, or sorry, to have the PS2 get its IP address and connect to the server, I'll click the X button on my controller for start device. So right now, the PS2 is just setting up its IP address, and then it'll connect to the it'll connect to the server and find the share, and then it'll get the list of games as we can see here. So we have San Andreas, ATV Offroad Fury, and Sly Cooper, which are the three games that I started with. So it looks like this worked out. To confirm, I'll just click X to start up Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. The first time you start it up, if you haven't used PS2 OPL Loader before, it'll look a little odd, might be a little disconcerting because you'll see the screen flash some colors. Right now it's flashing between purple and green. You'll see a few yellows in here near the end of the sequence, but basically these are just debug colors to help you if you're having trouble starting a game. It kind of gives you some information as to what the PS2 is doing. And basically what it's doing right now is it's trying to trick the PS2 into thinking it's playing a DVD when in reality it's going to start up a game. So the PS2 thinks it's playing a DVD, it's actually starting a game, and will you use the controller to control it. So that's a little bit of how it works in the background. But as we can see, San Andreas is starting. We got the uh, Rockstar Games logo popping up, and we'll have the Rockstar North logo here. So it looks like we got into the game. But uh, let's just let it load up and see if we can actually get into the game and start playing as CJ. Awesome. So it looks like the game is loaded up. It's working just fine. I can run around. And yeah, PS2 OPL loader is working exactly as it should. So I hope this tutorial helped you out. If you have questions, you can leave a comment down below. I'm not so active on YouTube, so I might miss your comment. If I do miss your comment, you can also use one of the PS2 forums. I'll have a link in the description on getting there. 
they have some good resources. You can also use Google just to Google if you're getting some error codes. I've found some of those PS2 forums of good advice on fixing it and some guides on how to troubleshoot and everything. So I hope this tutorial worked out for you. And enjoy playing your PS2 games using OPL Loader.